Okay. Um, what problem were you having? Uh, okay, I don't have anything that's, you know, really dramatic, uh, uh, but uh, I uh, started having... Uh, I started having uh, insomnia when, uh, in, in December, uh, very severe insomnia, and as I was falling asleep, uh, I was experiencing um, images that were coming to me of, a, of a, an individual and, uh, attacking me or the ones I loved, uh, ugly uh, images, and um, since that time, the images have have subsided. But the um, uh, and the insomnia has somewhat improved. But I've been experiencing a lot of of uh, depression and anxiety, and uh, even a sense, on some occasions, of almost uh, kind of not being completely attached to my body, so to speak, uh, and wondering uh, if I was going to lose my mind. And um, uh, so, uh, and of course, you know, I got fired from my job uh, for during the period of the severe insomnia. Uh, but... Um, um, what religion are you? I was raised a Baptist. And have you been practicing anything? Uh, no, not really. Just prayer and uh, every day prayer, every day. Actually, I do the. Uh, I've been attracted to the to the, the Catholic Church since I was seventeen. I'm fifty eight years old, and I uh, I do an abbreviated form of the uh, Rosary. I say ten Hail Marys a day, plus all the other um, uh, preceding uh, parts of the Rosary. And you found out about us through. That link? Uh, I just, I just, uh, I didn't know where to go. I got on the internet, uh, typed in Catholic Exorcist in Miami, Florida, but I wasn't able to turn up uh, much of anything. Well, what I would say to you, I don't know that you necessarily need an exorcist. Uh -huh. I, I think that what you need to do mm -hmm. is become a traditional Catholic. Okay. Because Christ only founded one church. Uh -huh. And the rest of them are man-made breakoffs. The rest of the Protestant religions. Okay. And so, in order to be in a right state with God, and most importantly, to save your soul, you need to uh, become a Catholic. I see. And so, I would recommend praying the full rosary each day. Uh -huh. um, do you know, do you have a rosary? Yes, I do. Okay. I wear one every day. Do you know how to pray? Uh, it, well, I, I used to know how to pray. I have to review again the well, right beads and everything. Well, on our website, we have a how to pray, pray the rosary sheet. Yes, oh, good. Uh, you have our website, right? Yeah, well, I'm looking at it right now, yeah. Okay, it's, yeah, it's probably halfway down or so. I see, okay. And um, that's what I'd start to do each day. Okay. Um. I don't know if you're familiar with the basic catechism. We sell one for $5. I see. That's something you should familiarize yourself with, this teaching on the sacraments, um, the basic tenets of the faith. All right. Um, because it's it's really critical to become a Catholic. And yes. our material also gets into what has happened after Vatican II. Right. I don't know if you're familiar with that at all. Uh, somewhat. Basically, what's gone on is a counterfeit religion has been promoted. They changed the mass, they changed the teachings, and all of these changes have been brought in by men who are actually not real Catholics, uh -huh. but enemies of the Catholic faith and apostates from it. And this whole situation is predicted to happen at the end. It is. Yeah, it's predicted in Scripture. It's predicted in Catholic prophecy. You may have ever heard of the Whore of Babylon. Yes. Okay. Um, so certain non-Catholics believe that the Catholic Church is the Whore of Babylon mentioned in Apocalypse 17 and 18 or Revelation 17 and 18. Uh -huh. And that's not correct because the Catholic Church is the one true church, the Bride of Christ. However, what it is describing is this counterfeit bride, this counterfeit Catholicism. Uh -huh. at the end of the world. 
And that's why actually some of the external features of this Whore of Babylon correspond to the external features of the Catholic Church. For instance, it says that this Whore of Babylon is clothed in purple and scarlet. Uh-huh. Bishops wear purple, cardinals wear scarlet. I see. And the point is that this counterfeit church, this apostate church, has the externals of the true church, but actually isn't the true church. Mm-hmm. And the true church is reduced to a remnant. And this is all predicted in Second Thessalonians 2 as part of the great apostasy. Jesus in Matthew 24 talks about the abomination of desolation being in the holy place and a massive spiritual deception, which leaves a situation where even the elect would be deceived if that were possible. So, and how, how is uh, how is, is does the Most Holy Family Monastery um, um, see uh, what, Pope Paul, uh, the last Pope, John Paul II? Yeah, uh, he was. We we have a whole video on him. We have uh, pointing out that he was he taught many many heresies which were condemned by the Catholic Church. Is he considered a, a conscious? Uh, enemy of the church, yes, or, or an accidental enemy of the church, uh, conscious. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And um, he, the things that he did were revolutionary. He he went into a synagogue, okay, which is condemned by Catholic teaching. He went into a Buddhist temple. He constantly expressed respect for false religions. Uh-huh. He kissed the Muslim Koran, which rejects the Trinity. He taught that non-Catholic religions have saints and martyrs, which contradicts Catholic teaching. He taught that non-Catholics could receive Holy Communion, on and on and on. And so the Church teaches that if you deny a dogma of the faith, you become a heretic, Mm -hmm. and you cease to be a member of the Church. Right. And you lose any authority you might hold in it if you're a bishop. Uh And the same thing goes for a man who claims to be a pope. I see. And so, actually, it's the very principles of Catholic teaching which lead one to the position that there is no Pope reigning right now. The chair of Peter is actually vacant. And so, actually, in order to convert to the one true Catholic faith of all time, which you need to, you actually have to reject this post-Vatican II counter-church. It's it's sort of a unique period. And you can't go to this new Mass. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know if you know the difference at all. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, we have a whole package which gets into all the details on this. Uh-huh. I would strongly encourage you to get it. It's only 10 bucks, and you can get 10 DVD programs. You get three books, uh, audio tapes. You get an audio disc for only 10 bucks. Right. So it would really give you... And um, I would start to pray the rosary. We actually have a section on our website called The Steps to Convert to the Catholic Faith. Uh-huh. And that gives simple instructions about the steps to follow if you haven't been baptized and you're trying to convert, or if you have been baptized and you're trying to convert, or if you're not sure if you've been baptized. Mm-hmm. So I'd look at that. Okay, okay. All right, I'll check out the website. There. But the two things I would say that you should get, you, that you really need to see, are the Penny Catechism uh-huh. and this $10 DVD package, because... It contains, really, the DVDs you really need to see to find out what's going on. Right. And I would start to pray the rosary every day. And, and basically, we, you know, we can help you with any specific questions you have and exactly what you need to do. Okay. All right. Well, I thank you very much, sir, and I'll, uh, I'll look at this on this website. Okay. And if you, you know, are ready to go from there or whatever, then give us a call back. Okay. You got it. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye now.